We're taking you to the walled medieval village of Saint Paul de Vence in the south of France. Easily reached from the main city of Nice in a one hour public bus ride. The visitor enters the town through the vaulted passage of the main gate, finally reaching the inside of the town. There's obviously a lot of money that's flowing through this little town of Saint Paul with these high end art galleries everywhere. And these monies have been put to good use in fixing up this little village. There's no graffiti, there's no trash. Even the paving on the lanes is precise and beautiful. Everything is sparkling. They keep the place spick and span. So if you want to see an old medieval village that is as clean as today, go visit Saint Paul in Provence. It started life as a fortified village back in the Middle Ages. It's up on a hill and they built a stone wall around it and filled the little village with these stone structures and a stone church and different little town squares. The Place de la Grande Fontaine has always been a busy spot in town because this is where people brought their clothes to wash them. It was redesigned in the 17th century and again in the 19th century. <laughs> There's one main lane in the village and we're gonna walk you along its entire length from one end to the other and then back again. This goes right through the middle of the village from one end to the other. One of the most interesting points connected with the main street of town is the preservation of the ancient shops. At almost every step, one meets with the wide arch, which contained both the door and the window of the shop. There are more houses of obvious antiquity in the place than will be seen in any town of its size in Provence. When you reach the far end of the main lane, you exit through another gateway arch, and then there's a staircase that leads you right up onto the wall with a lovely viewing platform where you can see across the distant landscape. The walks around the walls are in part wider and the small gardens of the houses sloping down to them with the dark foliage and golden fruit of their orange groves form a beautiful foreground to the lovely views that are visible off in the distance in every direction. Typical of the medieval gateway, you have the outer wall that forms an extra barrier to protect this potential vulnerable spot in the fortification. You can walk around a little bit around the outside of the old town and see some of the homes and see some of the locals out for a walk. And then you can climb back up through one of the little side alley staircases Notice there's a small five-star hotel right in the middle of town, La Saint Paul. That would be an excellent place to stay if you'd like to spend the night. However, it's not open in the off season. We're here in November and they were closed. On the summit of the town is the church and close to it, the two great square towers of the 13th and 14th centuries. The church is a small but remarkable monument. The church interior is one of the most beautiful in Provence and certainly one of the most interesting. Among its most notable features are a couple of altar screens of exquisitely carved wood, which date from between the 15th and the 17th centuries. The chapel of St. Clement the Martyr with an abundance of stucco and frescoes a couple of indifferent village cats were waiting for us when we came out of the church. One of them kind of blending in like camouflage, matching the wall behind him. In a very small village like this with a population inside the wall of just about 300 people, everybody knows each other and stops to say a friendly hello. Bonjour. We're getting hungry already and it's kind of mid-afternoon, late in the season, so there was not a lot of restaurants open in this small town, but we got lucky and found this very friendly creperie with a barrel vaulted interior that's probably about 500 years old. And we had a chance to learn the name of the restaurant from the very friendly lady who owns it. T-H-A. 
is the French name for tea. For tea. Okay. And we are a tea room. Tea. <laughs> yeah. And you have crepes. Salad, tarts, and crepes. Quite easy to find. It's located on that staircase lane just in front of the church. Typical of nearly all the restaurants and cafes of France, dogs are most welcome. Dogs are part of the life here, and it shows just how local and relaxed and how friendly this place was. We'll be showing you more of Saint Paul de Vence in the evening in a related episode. Well, it's finally time to depart Saint Paul, going out through that same medieval gateway. It's a double gateway, as you see for a really strong defensive fortification over to the bus stop. Bus number 400. You could take this bus all the way back to the city of Nice if that's your home base. Some views of Saint Paul from the distance as we drive by. The buses come about every hour during the day and later in the rush hour, say 5 p.m., there's three buses in one hour. We are riding this bus back to the city of Nice, which is our home base for exploring the French Riviera. We have created many more movies about this area, the Côte d'Azur, the French Riviera, that you can find on our channel, so have a look. You'll see programs about Cannes and Monaco, Monte Carlo, Saint Paul, Vence, Villefrance, all around through the region, including Antibes and we really enjoy using Nice as our home base to enjoy it all. We've got 1,000 free travel movies covering the world. All of these travel movies are hosted on YouTube and listed on our channel page, but you might find it easier to find them and navigate through our website, tourvideos.com.